Hey there. In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how to create a jQuery slider. Now, to give you an example of what this slider will be like and the functionalities it holds, I've made one already. So if we go to our web browser, I can see that I've got this tab up here and you can see that we've got the slider and it's so far looping through our images. It goes from one all the way to four. Once it reaches four, it starts at one again. You can also see that we have these previous and next buttons. If we click next, you can see it goes to four, one, two, and then it carries on looping. We can also go previous two, one, and then back to four, and it carries on looping. Now you can also see this slider starter started status even. Now this is going to tell you when the slider is started and finished, or um, not finished but stops looping. And why I've put this here is because when you hover over the slider, it's going to stop the loop of the slider. And when you hover back out, it's going to start the looping of the slider again. Now that's really useful if you're on a website and you have content which is going through the slider, which might have text on it. People might want to have to, I want to stop the slider to read the text. So in today's lesson, we're going to be going over the HTML and CSS of the slider. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up and Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder on our desktop. Now this is where we're going to keep all of the structuring for the slider. So it's going to have the HTML, the JavaScript, the CSS, and the images. So I'm just going to call it slider. And once we have that folder, what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. And within this folder, we're going to create three new folders. The first folder is going to be images. And that's going to contain your slider images. The next folder is going to be CSS, and that's going to contain your slider CSS. And then the last folder is going to be JS, and you guessed it, that's going to contain your slider JavaScript. Now, after this, all we need to do is create the actual HTML structure. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into your default text editor, that could be Dreamweaver, Notepad, Sublime Text 2. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Coda 2. It doesn't matter, it's totally up to you which one you use. Okay, so I'm going to go into Coda 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to write out a basic structure of a HTML document. Right, so as you can see, I've now got the HTML structure of this tutorial basically set out. We've just got the doc type and the title and that's it so far. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to file save as, I'm going to save it to my desktop into that folder named slider. And we're just going to call it index.html. Right, so once that's saved, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the CSS document for the slider. So I'm going to go to file, new, and I'm going to create a new CSS document. Then I'm going to file, save as, and I'm going to save it into that folder called CSS within the slider folder. And I'm just going to call it slider.css. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to link these files together. So within the head of our slider, what we're going to do is we're just going to type in link rel equals style sheet. And then href is going to be within the CSS folder and we're going to, and we call it slider.css and close it off. Okay, so now we've got the HTML structure basically set out and we've got the slider CSS in that document. What we're going to do is we're just going to lay out how the HTML will sort of support the slider. So what we need on the page is we need a div with the ID of slider. Now the reason why I chose an ID is because this div is going to be a unique element on the page. There's not going to be another slider on the page. If there's another slider on the page, I suggest that you use a class. All right, so we're just going to close that div off. And within this is what our images are going to be or where our images are going to be displayed. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to go into the slider, into the images folder. And you see, I've got no images. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag some images, which I have already into that folder. And they're just basic images. They can be however big you want and whatever, um, how many you want. You just need to put them into the document. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my document and I'm just going to put in all my images. Okay, so once I've included these images with just a simple image tag, nothing else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two links, one saying next and one saying previous. Okay, so now that I have these links, you can see that I've just linked, linked them to the hash symbol so that we don't have to worry about them going to another page for yet. We're going to do that in jQuery by making it not do the default thing by going to another page and actually running a function instead. But we'll get to that in another lesson. Right, so what you'll realize is that if we then go to our folder on our desktop and we called it slider, if we open index.html, you can see it just looks like a big mess on the page with four images and the previous and next button. So what we need to do is we need to style this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the slider CSS and the first thing we're going to target is the element with the ID of slider. We're going to open and close the curly brace and we're just going to put in some basic styles. Now what you'll need in this is you'll need the same height and width as your images. So my width is 600 pixels and my height is 400 pixels. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do overflow hidden so that when the images are like loading in and they're like all there, you only want to see one, which will be the one which is first, which is number one. Right, so now we have this, the images are going to be displayed in a nicer way. But what we want is we want the slider to be in the center of the document. And how I'm going to achieve that is I'm just going to be putting margin, 30 pixels from the top, and then all of the others are going to be auto. And that will make it auto align into the center of the document. Once that's done, we can just save. And then we can go back into our web browser and refresh. And you can see that we now have the one image on the document. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the image tags within this slider. So I'm going to do the hash symbol slider targeting the ID of slider. And then I'm going to do a greater than symbol and then image. So this will target the image tags within that slider. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure they have the width and the height of the slider by setting it in the CSS. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to float them to the left. And then I'm also going to set the default display on them as none. Now this will make them hidden at first. So now if we refresh, you won't be able to see any of the images. But with jQuery in the next lesson, we're going to make them fade in and loop through. Okay, so now that's done. All I need to do now is uh, target the left and right buttons. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to target the A tags all together. You can define them to a specific class, but I'm keeping it simple. And I'm just going to have the padding of, let's say, 5 pixels on the top, 10 pixels on the left and right. I'm going to give it the background color of F0, F0, F0. I'm going to allow the margin top to be 30 pixels. And then text decoration is going to be none because I don't want that horrible underline. Now, if we refresh, you can see that these links have been styled, but they're all the way over here. So one thing we can do is we can wrap everything in a container div, which are normally called wrappers. So I'm creating a div with the class of wrapper and I'm wrapping everything within it. Then, for that wrapper class, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to define a width and then I'm also going to set the margin to 0 pixels and auto. So it's right up against the top of the document and in the center. So now that we have that, we can go into Google Chrome and refresh and you can see that our links are right where we want them to be. But the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm just going to change the color to, let's say, 666 on these links because that's really annoying me how they're blue. 
Alright, so now you can see that we have previous and next. But we want the next button to be way over here and the previous button to stay where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two new classes, a dot left and then a dot right. Now the right class is going to be floated right and then the left class is going to be floated left. So once we've done that, we can then go back into index.html and just add in these classes accordingly. So I want the previous button on the left and I want the next button on the right. So now if we refresh again, you can see that the next button's over here and the previous button's over there and our slider will be in the middle. It's just not there yet because we are not fading in the images. So that's all in this tutorial. But in the next tutorial, we'll be going over the JavaScript to loop through the images. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to put your thumbs up to this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.